Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Kohi here, Senior Product Manager for Fusion 360 Design and Documentation. Basically, my team looks after all things 2D and 3D in the product, and I came across a pretty sick-looking part um, that I had to remodel. <clears throat> and uh, along the way, um, I learned a few things that I wanted to pass along to you. So uh, that's what this uh, four-part series is all about. We're going to spend some time modeling up this part. So let's get started. Um, start with a new design and um, start with a few base sketch features here. Now, um, if you watched any of the previous um, uh, tutorials that I've put out here recently, um, I always try to start uh, a part from origin. Um, it gives me three works pl planes and three axes and an origin point that I would have otherwise have to create. Um, so this is really handy. Um, so just real quick, a uh, 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 circle, extruded, nothing's fancy here. And um, if you want to, <clears throat> you don't have to, but I, I like to I like to church up my, my parts a little bit, go a little Joe Dierte on you. Um, so here, you know, you hit A, appearances come up, and you can search through the library, um, pick some color that may be obnoxious, um, maybe less obnoxious. Um, and trust me, I'm, I'm actually not going to stick with this red very long because it does get a little annoying on the screen after a while. Um, so I've got my first sketch, um, changed the appearance of it, and I start a new sketch on this next feature. And, and 90 millimeter circle that I'm going to go ahead and extrude, but I need to add some taper to this. Um, so rather than extrude it and to do draft, um, you can actually do um, a taper draft uh, within the same command. Um, so that you don't have to go through that extra step. So I'm just going to put a negative two taper angle uh, on this extrusion, um, extrude this thing out about 33 millimeters and good to go. Um, you start to see this shape and you're like two extruded circles, Rob, why didn't you just do a, um, do a revolution, um, sketch the profile and revolve around that more than reasonable. Um, why would I have two features instead of just one revolution? Uh, no, real preference there, uh, quite honestly. Um, but, you know, as I carry forward, I'm going to put a fillet. Um, notice I was able to do the two differently sized fillets in the same command and then throw a chamfer on there. And this thing's starting to look a little bit like a part. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is a little bit more um, complex series of sketches here. Um, and sometimes when you're modeling, um, you need to be able to get some material out of the way. So you see this in the sketch palette, you have the ability to slice those graphics. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch a construction geometry, construction circle um, on here, because that the construction geometry doesn't count in a profile when you go to do an extrude. Um, but I need that construction geometry for placement. Now notice also that um, I wanna go ahead and project the outside edge, so I have reference to the outside edge, so P um, in the uh, selection there. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go over and turn off the visibility of the bodies. Super, super handy when you're just concentrating on your sketch. Go over the bodies, turn off the visibility, and it's off. So a couple more construction lines, so I want a reference to horizontal, I want another reference to what will eventually be a specific angle, okay? Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and place a circle on that intersection point between those two construction lines. Okay, it'd be a 19 millimeter diameter circle there. And then, as you can see, that I haven't dimensioned yet the angle. Um, so I'll place a quick dimension on the angle, placing exactly where I want, uh, 22 and a half. I could have also done an equation in here, by the way. Um, and we're going to get into that here. Um, throughout this tutorial, we're going to do some cool stuff with equations on this. So stay tuned. Uh, if this is um, watching me draw, this is boring. It gets more exciting, trust me. So I'm going to grab a circular pattern of that. I want eight instances evenly distributed around 360 degrees. Um, and I'll go ahead and hit OK. Cool. Now, the thing about what I've just sketched is um, you can see that it actually extends beyond uh, that circle extends a little bit beyond the uh, outer edge of the projected geometry here, but that's exactly what I want. So I want this to be cut off. It needs to have a, a, a smooth um, surface intersection with, even though it's it's 
um, uh, it's got a fillet on there. It, it actually creates a pretty cool looking shape here. So I'm going to do a two distance extrude. Um, I'll go two millimeters in one direction, change the termination plane to the back uh, face of that. And I'm going to hit OK. And, and you're thinking, why, why, why did you do a circular pattern um, of those sketch objects that you're not actually going to use? There's a method in my madness here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the visibility of that sketch back on. And I'm going to do a separate extrude for these other two um, bosses up here. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to do a separate fillet. I'll eventually do a separate hole for those. And it's largely because of the additional feature that's going to be represented um, as part of these um, mounting bosses here that <clears throat> I'm gonna have a rib going through the two at the, I don't know, the 230 and the 330 position, um, and a different rib that goes to the 11 o'clock and one o'clock positions there. So, um, just a real quick tidbit here. You, you can see that it's giving me some weird shadowing on my part um, that I don't necessarily want. Here's where you change that. Um, down here in the bottom of the screen, visual styles, turn off things like object shadows. You can determine whether or not you want ambient inclusion, a ground plane, an environment dome. Um, th these are all user preferences. Um, they're per instance, per your login, uh, even if you log into a different machine, by the way. Um, you know, these preferences come along with your login, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and throw a one and a half millimeter fillet on the bottom of that. And then again, um, separate command, and you'll see why here in a second, um, for these two fillets. They're the same, but they need to be different. Um, and, and like I said, you'll, you'll see why. Okay. So, um, the red is getting obnoxious. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and change the color of this. So this would likely be uh, a cast part. And I know I'm going to get comments on this, you know, Rob, you don't have draft on everything. How could this possibly be a cast part? I get it. Um, know that this tutorial is really more about how to do the features and functionality of the, the part modeling features of fusion more than it is a, how to model a cast part. All right. Now that we got that out of the way that should or should not reduce a few comments on this video. It might. All right. So um, now we're going to go ahead and uh, project uh, some of these, project the geometry that will represent the center of the holes that I'm about to place. Um, but again, just like I did a separate uh, extrude and fill it, um, I want a separate command or a separate feature um, for these holes. Uh, is all this work, the separating the work, going to pay off in the end? Uh, maybe. Could there is there another way to model this? Probably. Um, but this is the way that my um, insane the, the three of the four voices in my head uh, told me to model it this way. So um, I listened to the uh, majority. So um, we've got our part in a really good spot. Part two, we're going to go ahead and place the rib, do some mirrors, some circular patterns. It's going to be awesome.